Hello, everybody. Um, hello, hi. It's been a while again. <laughs> I keep trying to like, um, I think I've tried to upload, well not tried to upload, I filmed a podcast episode like two weeks ago and I never got a chance to upload it and then I was like, I already like finished some of the stuff that I was talking about and then I was just like, might as well just make a new podcast episode. So here I am. Hello. Hi, my name is Mel. Um, I am known as Cozy Cardigans on Instagram <laughs> and on Ravelry. And I am also the owner and dyer of Big Little Yarn Co., a hand dyed yarn shop. Um, so, how are you? It's, I always say it's been a while, and I feel like I keep repeating myself, but it has been a while. <laughs> so, um, I hope you all are doing well, staying not too hot if you're in the northern hemisphere and staying not too cold if you're in the southern hemisphere um yeah so i finally have time or i gave myself the day not the day off but um i didn't sleep well that last night and so i'm a bit tired um and when i'm tired i make a lot of mistakes when i dye yarn so i just kind of gave myself the opportunity to do a lot more admin work today and also I have to as you can see there's this gigantic pile of unskeined yarn right here that I'm gonna have to skein up after this so um that is on my to-do list today but also I was like this is a perfect time to just sit down and be able to talk to you all because honestly I've missed just being able to show my knits to you and to talk about it with you and just to say hi, you know, it's nice to say hi. Um, so I hope you all have been doing well and I hope you're ready for another <laughs> long episode. Um, so I'll just get started. Uh, I have quite a few FOs as you can probably tell. Um, I have some very exciting news also to share with you. Um, so I guess I'll get started with what I'm wearing. So this is the, super excited for this, um, this is the Stripey Turtle Tank by Emily Curtis. Um, she's Kurt on Instagram and she also has a YouTube podcast, um, knitting podcast called 108 Stitches. If you haven't watched it, um, she's super sweet, um, super cute. I love all the stuff that she knits up. Um, she has like a great sense of style and she also has a really cute puppy. Um, so I highly recommend you watch her YouTube if you haven't seen it already. And also if you're into baseball, she's into baseball. Um, I'm not into sports at all, but I just like watching her talk about it because, um, she's just so into it and I kind of love that. So, um, yeah. Hi, Emily. Um, so this is her first, her very first pattern, which is kind of crazy. Um, she's talked about it quite a bit in her past podcast episodes. But um, this is her, again, this is her stripy turtle tank. And as you can see, I didn't knit the turtle part of the tank. Um, I just kept it as an I-cord bind off. Her original pattern has it as, a, I believe, a one by one rib. So it's like a bit of a turtleneck here. Um, but I wanted it more of like a summer type of crop. Oh, my battery's dying. So I'm just gonna pause really quick. I'll, I'll be right back. I'm back. Sorry if you moved positions. Um, I had to change the battery. But I was talking about the Stripey Turtle Tank. Um, so yeah, she talks about it quite a bit in her previous episodes. If you want to go ahead and give that a watch, she explains more about why she decided to make this tank top and like why she chose the specific design. Um, aspects of this pattern but 
immediately when she kind of just like mentioned um making this pattern and she explained it like in my head I was like wow that is such a great pattern and it just sounds so good and then she knit up her own prototype and I was like yes that pattern I love it so much because I personally am a very stripey person I love stripes I love knitting stripes I think they're so addicting to knit so I was like yes I need to make this pattern when it comes out and then I was thinking about the colors that she chose for her prototype her sample knit and I was just like you know that would be a really great kit to make like it would be so much fun to make different like there's so many different ways you can knit these stripes and to have different color combinations it's just like such a versatile pattern to have in like your knitting arsenal so I contacted her and was wondering or I asked her if she was willing to collab with me on making kits for my August update so that is what's happening so I'm gonna have three different kits for the stripey turtle tank available in my shop um, in my next August shop update and I believe the update will be on August 8th um, if you are not on Instagram, then, oops, sorry. If you're not on Instagram, um, I'll put a newsletter link down below. I haven't been, to be honest, I haven't been updating my newsletter as much as I should lately, but I'm going to get back on that. So if you're not on Instagram and you don't really have any social media other than YouTube, um, then I do recommend signing up for my newsletter and I put all the links and info about my updates within the email so you could just click and go when the shop update opens. So anyways, um, so the one that I knitted, this is her kind of the closest color, I use the closest colorways that I had in my, um, my tonal lineup to try to match her original color selection for her sample knit so I love the colors that she chose so we like zoom called and like decided on all these colors and I don't have the other two kits for um, her pattern with me because I sent it over to her in America so that she can knit up um, samples for herself and um, she talks about it in her latest YouTube episode so I'm gonna put that link down below as well um, but so she shows off the colorways but I'll put pictures up too but this one is like the original um, color set I guess you could say and it has this like kind of retro-y vibe to it I don't know like I feel I don't roller skate but I feel like this would be a really great roller skating tank top or something um, so yeah, the blue is Amit, and then from here, this is Bramble, Rust, Sakura, Tamago, and Lagoon. So there is, in the kit, there's going to be one main colorway, which is going to be like the colorway that you use for the bottom ribbing, and then also like the turtleneck if you decide on the turtleneck. And then there's going to be five CCs contrast colors that you can use for the stripes and oh my gosh it is so cute so I knit my tops very cropped because I wear high-waisted pants like my belly buttons like down here so this is like perfect let me back up how cute is this so since you do knit it in the round there's gonna be like a color jog right here and there's like ways to kind of offset that color jog that you get from knitting stripes in the round. But I don't really, I honestly don't really care about it. And cause it's just like, you're kind of covering it most of the time anyways. Um, so I didn't really, no modifications other than the neck. So yeah, I did an I cord bind off for the neck because I didn't want it to be like a turtleneck. Um, I wish I kind of used like a 
bigger needle because it is a bit tight when I pull it over my head but it's not that big of a deal and I really do like that high neck shape that you get um I think it's really cute so yeah um look out for that August 8th um yeah so I should have put some pictures up that will all be available in my shop oh and also the base that I that the kits will be in will be in a uh, fingering weight 100% superwash merino so super soft it's a four ply so it's just like this bouncy nice classic base so yeah that's gonna be really fun and honestly the other two kits like I'm totally gonna knit that up because I knit this in I think like super record time I think two or three days I just like sped through this because the stripes are just so addicting guys like it's just <laughs> like I don't know what to say it's like potato chip knitting like it's just so easy and quick so this is my it's not my first fo in the list like this is totally out of time order like this isn't the way I'm gonna show you guys my fo's is not the order that I've made them all but this is the one that I'm like super excited about and I absolutely love it. So thank you for the great pattern, Emily. So check out her YouTube um, if you haven't seen that yet and go ahead and follow her on Instagram if you wanna see how um, the other samples knit up. So yeah, so that's the first one. Um, I guess going by what else I finished, I finished the first thing I finished right after my last episode is also another tank top. It is the color quadrant top by James N. Watts. This is also pretty cute. I don't know, I guess I've just been like on a, I guess because it's summertime, you know, I've just been on like a tank top, summer top um, kick lately. Maybe I could just like throw this on top. It's going to be really hot, but... I can kind of see the stripey tank. It's kind of how it looks. So this is also quite cropped, which is how I like it. Um, this was my very first intarsia knit. So as you can see, there's like these blocks of color and then the back is a bit different too. So yeah, these are all the tonals from my last, okay, I'm gonna take this off from my last Sakura collection. Oh, graceful Mel, very graceful. But um, <clears throat> this was from my last Sakura collection. These are all the tonals that I had and I just decided to put them all together in a top because they all look pretty together, so why not? Um, so the brown here is Bramble, the green is Matcha, the pink is Haru, uh, no, Sakura, and then this minty green, it's kind of blowing out a little, is Haru, or Haru, and this is what it looks like in the back. So yeah, this was my very first intarsia knit, and honestly, I was kind of scared about it because I see, um, like, Shiny Superhero, if you see her Instagram, she does a lot of intarsia knitting, and it just looks so cool and complicated and like just like yeah so um I was kind of worried about it I did want to make one of her patterns but I kind of wanted to dip my toes into intarsia first and this was honestly the perfect pattern to try out intarsia because it's literally the only part that you're doing that intarsia is this center line here so what you pretty much what you're pretty much doing is if I flip it inside out you're kind of, if you can see, you're kind of just like locking these two colors together to make one continuous fabric, if that makes sense. Once you start, it kind of starts making sense in your head and it's really easy to just get into. And um, the pattern calls for a worsted weight, so I used my non-superwash merino worsted weight base um and so it knits up super quickly i love the little pocket it will not hold anything except maybe stitch markers 
<laughs> but um, I think it's super cute. And then um, I love how there's like these contrast I chords. This is how I got the idea of getting giving this one an I chord neck as well because I really like that simple just no rib kind of neck. Um, so yeah, I highly recommend this pattern as well. And again, it knits up super fast and it's just like a cute top. And then also, um, I knit mine without a sleeve, but there is a sleeve if you'd like. Yeah, um, they put different options on there so that you can knit a sleeveless one or a with sleeve one. So I do kind of want to knit like a with sleeve one maybe for like the fall. Um, that'd be super cute. So that is another F.O. Um, what's another F.O.? I wrote it all down. Another F.O. is this one. Should I just put that on too? I guess I will. This here is the My Top by Gavriella Knits. Or Gavriella Makes, sorry. And I made this out of a, um, it's a cotton mohair blend yarn that I got at a, like a discount yarn shop. So I don't really know what the brand is. It was like a hundred yen per ball. So it was like a four, this was like a $4 sweater. So super cheap and it was so fun to make. Like if you look closely, there's these cute little bobbles and eyelet lace and these textured parts. So the yoke is super fun to knit. And then after that, no sleeve required. It looks like there's a sleeve because of the yoke, but no sleeve required. You just bind off on the sleeve and then you work on the body and then you're done. So it is super fast and easy to make. And with cotton yarn, it makes it super flowy and light. And I love it so much. Um, yeah, I, I didn't do any I don't think I did any uh, mods on this one, but I did do because um, my gauge was a little, I think my gauge was a little off, so I went to, I should have knitted a size small, but I believe I knit this using the instructions for the size large because my gauge was a bit smaller. so. It worked out perfectly. Um, I do have to wear like an undershirt when I wear this because the armholes are a little big. But I mean, I would have to wear it anyways because there's like eyelet lace here anyways. But um, yeah, it's super cute. It's perfect for summertime. It's again, cropped as usual for my um, high-waisted pants. But yeah, it's cute, huh? So this is my third FO, and then I have one more that I forgot, so I'm going to come right back. I'll be right back. I'm sorry. I thought I was ready, but I was not. Be right back. Be right back. Okay, I'm back. This is my last FO to show you. I'm just going to throw it on. This is the, looks a little funny with this one, but this is the, um, oh, what's it called? Summer Olive Top by uh, Ria of Covive. She's Covive on Instagram. And this is what it looks like. It's got little buttons. Let me show you how it looks unbuttoned so it's like a little vest versus a top I guess but I mean you could wear it as a top um, I love it so this is what it looks like if I wore it as a vest but it's got this really lovely let me show you, shoulder a bit here and I think that the construction was quite clever so you knit let me pull myself up here so you knit this um, shoulder bit with two yarns held together so it's quite thick and then you um here 
you how do you how do you explain this like you um knit front and back on each stitch so you end up with double the amount of stitches but you're knitting the rest of the body um just with one strand so it makes this really nice like ruffle here which i really love and um, i knit this using bramble on my Coradale base and it's honestly like the perfect neutral uh vest top um so yeah it's got buttons i haven't i haven't knit anything that requires buttons in a long time so i got myself some buttons just simple like tortoise shell buttons i don't know if you could hear that but the garbage truck is coming so sorry if you hear like a something that sounds like an ice cream truck in the u.s but it's actually the garbage truck so and then anyways so it also has a um uh, what do you call this a pico edge i guess that's what it's called so this is my first time knitting with the knitting a pico edge and i kind of love it it's so cute really um finishes the look so this how it looks it's a little longer oh and it also has this underarm kind of slight cabling and then as you can see i um alternated skeins for pretty much all of it so this is just like a cute thing to kind of throw over like if i'm going outside late at night going to the combini Sorry, should I? Can ignore that. <laughs> They're making announcements on the garbage truck. But, um, so yeah, this is my last FO. It's so hard to talk with this song going. Okay. Hopefully, you don't hear that. Too much but yeah this is my last fo um super happy with it as you can see it's all just crop tops this past couple months because it's just so hot here it gets very hot and humid oh also in the back i forgot there's this cabling that you do in the back and then the bottom hem is split you could see that so yeah super cute maybe maybe i should just wear that one more time so you can see can you see that it's got that split hem and then the cabling in the back. very cute um yeah that's all like my fo's i do have a hoe a half object um let me show you that real quick. It's nothing much. It's just socks. So I have this guy. Um, this is a half object, so I'm still... I haven't even cast it on with my other half because I'm working on another pair of socks. Um, so half object. It's just regular stripey socks. This is a self-striping yarn from Nomadic Yarns. Um, I bought a bunch of her colorways or a bunch of her skeins before I left the U.S. because I just love her self-striping colorways. They are so fun to knit. And then, um, for the contrast toe and heel, I used my own Tamago colorway because, I don't know, I thought yellow would look really cute. This is her, um, Squad Gourds colorway, I believe. Yeah, and um, I just did like a simple broken rib stitch, um, like texture. It's just a regular vanilla sock, my usual vanilla sock recipe. If you, I know some people always um, message me about what if the what am I saying? Some people message me and ask what the best kind of basic sock pattern is for beginner knitters and I always recommend um, Summerly Knits SOS basic socks pattern. 
I believe it's free and then um, it also walks you through a sock really well like if I forget how to do sometimes I forget how to do like the gusset decreases like it just like doesn't stick in my head so I just refer back to her pattern and it's great so I recommend that and just a little half object the current socks I'm knitting I can't show you because they're actually made with my first Ghibli collect not collection Ghibli yarn club colorway so a new thing in my shop if you don't follow me on Instagram is I'm doing a Ghibli yarn club every month you're welcome to join anytime um, I put up the listings in the beginning of the month and leave them until they're the spots are all filled up but um, every month uh, there's a new Ghibli movie that I base a colorway off of and you get a sock set so I'm knitting that sock set right now and I can't show you um, it's from the June club and it's from Kiki's delivery service and it's called town with the ocean view I'll put like a in the inspo palette that I put up on Instagram here but um, it's knitting up so nicely I'm so happy with it and the reason why I can't show you even though it's June is because there's actually a three month kit you can buy since um, I know shipping from Japan to wherever you are is quite expensive right now and in general because of international shipping um, I do have an option for a three month set that I will send to you in three months time um, so since the club started in June who have the people who got that three month set in June will get June July and August so in August I will be sending that to you if you've signed up for it and purchased that thank you so much um, I'm so excited to get that to you so um, I think what did that I haven't had that. June was Kiki's delivery service. July is um, Tonari no Totoro, um, my neighbor Totoro, and August was Howl's Moving Castle. So, in on August for that shop update I talked to you about, um, the August eighth one, that will have the August Ghibli set as well as the three month pre-order set so August, September, and October and September has already been am I messing this up? September has already been announced no, I'm not September is uh, Laputa Castle in the Sky um, and October's will be announced on the 8th um, for the shop update so if you wanted to join in with us you're very much welcome to join in because honestly it's so much fun to make those colorways because it's what I've been growing up with it's what I've been obsessed with ever since I was like tiny <laughs> and so it's so much fun to share that love of Ghibli with you guys so um yeah that's all the FOs and I guess I'm kind of rolling into my whips because that's technically a whip um one whip that I've been working on so I have like a, a knit I usually when I dye yarn I have like a a whip next to me so that when the yarn is setting like I have to kind of wait for the dye to kind of not merge you call it like set onto the yarn pretty much um, so that it's permanent onto the yarn um, I always have like five ish minutes or five to ten minutes depending on what that color weight is um, so I'm always knitting away at something. So this is like my current, um, yarn dyeing project, I guess you can say. So this is the Agave Sweater by Orlan of Tet Besh. And this is the pattern that's in the newest Amirisu magazine. So, um, let me give you a close up. So it's got these little bits of, it's kind of hard to see, little bits of eyelets, I guess, every so often. And it's actually knit with two, um, two colors. So there's a main color and a contrast color, but um, I 
was looking at my stash and I saw these two colors and I was like these would look really good and I knew that the contrast between them wouldn't be um, like super apparent and it's kind of hard to tell on camera that there's even like a contrast color but I don't know if you could see but where the eyelets are there's like two rows of the contrast color it's a bit more apparent like off screen I guess but I do really like that low contrast stripey look as well as you can see I'm obsessed with stripes right now but um so the main color is my newest acquisition actually and it's not in skein form nice and pretty to show you but this is the um Sequoia National Park colorway by Explore Knits um, there's a online yarn shop here in Japan and they had an update of Explore Knits stuff so I was like now's my chance <laughs> there's like not as much competition and it wasn't a pre-order so I didn't have to wait for the yarn to be dyed up anyway so yeah so I got these two skeins and I'm alternating between skeins and then the contrast color for the stripes is my own bramble um, so you could kind of see like it's more apparent in skein form but it does kind of mellow out when you knit it up but I saw these together and I was like perfect and I didn't have like a full skein this is like a leftover from something I don't quite remember and I didn't have a full skein of this so I couldn't really like use it for an entire sweater so I thought it was perfect to use this as the stripes so it's been going really good I'm almost done with the body since I do like a cropped look I think I only need like about another inch and then I'm gonna knit the ribbing so it'll be a bit longer than the top I currently have on maybe it'll be about here but yeah it's just like a nice simple oh this is backwards a nice simple sweater and it's like a nice neutral dark neutral which I really love so you can kind of kind of see the striping going on kind of and I, I, I really like that about this how subtle it is you kind of have to look twice um, so yeah I'm knitting away on that almost done with the body hopefully I mean by the time I finish I'm pretty sure it'll still be hot but maybe I could wear it at night. We'll see. Um, so that is one whip. Another whip that I'm working on kind of slowly because it is so hot is my Marit. Sorry, it's still kind of attached to balls of yarn. So I think I talked about this in my last episode that I finished one sleeve. So this is the sleeve um, blocked and dried. And um, I, I blocked it and dried it because I wanted to see like how the length kind of got affected by it. And then I also used it as like a cheat gauge because I don't like knitting gauges in the round. But this is kind of like a good excuse. So yeah, I thought this was a perfect um, width wise. It might be a little short like length wise. Because I'm not sure where the um, where the shoulder the shoulder's a bit of a drop shoulder if you kind of look at the pattern did I tell it's the did I tell you the pattern it's the Marit cardigan by Kristen Drysdale so I'm not sure where the shoulder will end and where the sleeve will start so I mean if it starts here it's obviously a bit too short but um, I was thinking I'd rather have it too short and then I knit more versus it's too long and I'd have to frog so we'll see once the um, once I knit up the uh, body I'll figure out how long I want the sleeves um, but for now since I kind of um, have this pattern in my mind I'm, st I'm already just knitting the second sleeve I'm almost done I think I have one more like color work pattern to go and then it's good and as you can see I'm knitting it um, inside out because of the small circumference and I talk more about what knitting inside out 
kind of means and how you do it in my last podcast episode if you want to take a look at that. So if you have a little bit of trouble with kind of like the tension that you get from small circumference color work knitting, um, I highly recommend knitting inside out. It's super easy. It's not like you have to do math or do mirror image or anything. It's literally you just flip it inside out and that's it. So you just it's literally just instead of knitting like this, you you reach in and you flip it and you knit like that. That's that's it. I talked more about it in my last episode. But um it's a great way to do small circumference knitting. Also good for socks if you knit colorwork socks. Um, it's also a good option too. So I'm almost done with the sleeves and then I'm gonna cast on for the body and that will be my first steaking project which is exciting. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Oh, excuse me. Um, so yeah, that is another whip. I think that's my only two. Because I already talked about that secret Ghibli colorway sock. So yeah. Um, I've been good. I've wanted to cast on so badly. Like so many projects. I, my queue is up to 10. And I have all the yarn for it. But I've been holding myself back. Because I want to finish these. Like I want to wear them so badly. Even though it's so hot outside. Um, so acquisitions. I do have... One yarn acquisition and then also a couple knitting bookish acquisitions. So sorry for the crinkly, the crinkly uh, bag, but let me just, I'll just take it out of the bag. So I got, um, a couple weeks ago, a few weeks ago, I went to Fukuoka, which is about, I want to say about a eight hour bus ride. I took like a night, me and Tim took a night bus there. And over there, there is this lovely yarn shop called um, Amuhibi Knits. And they have a cute puppy. Um, maybe I could put like a, the little video I took here, or Tim took it actually. And while I was there, I love buying yarn as souvenirs for myself when I go to different cities or places so I bought myself a sweaters quantity of this beautiful Mominoki yarn um I believe they are Mominoki is um Japanese a Japanese the owner is Japanese but they live in Germany I believe so this is a German marine their German merino base and it's in the, I wonder what if there's a colorway. The colorway is ochre. Yeah, and it's 100% German wool. Merino wool of Germany. I'm guessing that's what it says. Everything's in German. But they had a lovely selection of this over there, and I decided on this lovely colorway. Um, I'm planning on making the Ebby cardigan by, I wrote it down, Alice Caetano for Brooklyn Tweed. Um, maybe I'll put a picture of it up here. But yeah, it is so, it's like so squishy and plump. And the ply looks like it's going to make wonderful cables and textures. And I'm so excited to cast on. This is one of the things where I'm like, should I, should I ball it up and just look at it? Should I... But I need to finish that. I want to finish one of the whips before I cast on this. Because this is going to be so much fun to knit. So I bought six balls of this to make that cardigan. <sighs> I'm so excited. This smells really good. It smells like the yarn shop. Oh, I love buying yarn. So yeah, this is my only uh, yarn acquisition. But I'm so excited for this. Uh, so excited. Yeah. So I have that, sorry, crinkly bag. Um, and then also I have a couple of books to show you. I forgot to show this to you, I got this a while ago, but I did get the 
Lane Magazine's 52 Weeks of Shawls. It says shawls in here, but let me show you without this jacket. 52 Weeks of Shawls. And I was kind of thinking about getting the 52 Weeks of Socks last year, but um, as much as I love knitting socks, I always just knit vanilla socks with like a random texture on it. I'm not really a uh, big um, socks with the fancy pattern on the cuff type of person because the socks I like to knit are quite short. Like I like the cuff to be about two inches, which is about five centimeters, I guess. So quite short. So you don't really get that much of space to kind of have like a fancy sock pattern on the cuff. You do get it on the foot, but my foot's pretty small, so it's just like, um, I just kind of like having knit socks that are simple. So when they announced that they were doing 52 weeks of shawls, I was like, well, that's a different story. I can knit, I can knit all the shawls, and now that I live in Japan where it gets cold, I can actually wear them. Because before, when I lived in LA, in Vegas, like... It just looked ridiculous to wear a shawl because it was always like 70s, 80s, 90s, 100s. So I got this and it's gorgeous. Like let me, maybe there's like pictures. Oh yeah, there's so many pretty patterns by so many talented, wonderful designers. Like, like sometimes I just look through this book and just feel inspired because it's just so pretty. I'm trying not to show the instructions too much, but yeah, there's so many patterns in here that I'd like to make. Um, it's a bit too hot to knit shawls right now, um, but shawls are definitely like, a, again, potato chip knitting, like when I'm watching a movie or something, like I just knit on a shawl because it usually takes forever. <laughs> But yeah, so excited that I have this. It is like my like my biggest book purchase, I feel like. I don't think I have another book that cost this much money. Um, but also 52 shawls, like I don't even know. I don't think I'll be able to knit all the shawls in this book anyways. Even if I wanted to. And I do want to. I think I pretty much like every single pattern in here. But um, yeah, this is like a lifetime kind of book. If I got to give this to my kids, I'll give this to my kids. But yeah, for now, it's for me. So I'm very excited for this. And then the other bookish kind of knitting thing is the Amirisu, newest Amirisu book. So that's where my agave sweater is from. Um, so this is their spring and summer um, edition. There was a Japanese option and an English option, but since I'm not very good at reading Japanese, I got the English option anyways. Um, I think you could find this in their stockists right now. I believe they still have some, um, copies left. But I got this one because their theme was Okinawa. And my mom is from Okinawa, so Okinawa is actually not a not that it's different from the rest of Japan, but it used to be its own entity before it got merged into Japan, like way, way, way back. Um, so the people there are a little darker skinned. Um, they have different foods. They have different cultures. Like, um, they're not like what you would imagine, like, when you think of Tokyo, like, that's not what Okinawa is really. It's quite tropical there. Um, they have a lot of fruits and a lot of kind of tropical type of foods and stuff like that. So, um, so because of that, um, Okinawans were pretty, um, mm, discriminated against I guess back in the day like my mom got made fun of like her family got made fun of because of how their skin looked like how because they don't or what Japanese people think they didn't look Japanese as what you would imagine so um I don't look 
Okinawan as much. That's what my that's what I've heard. Um, although my skin is a bit darker than um, a nor quote unquote normal Japanese person would be, but also that might be because I'm from California, so can't tell. But anyways, I love that it, the theme was Okinawa, and it made me really happy. Um, so it's quite tropical, like, you can kind of see, oh, this is like an ad page, actually. So you can kind of see, like, they made it kind of tropical, and they have a lot of summer, summery knits. And the spreads look really pretty. Let me see. Here's another one. But yeah, I'm super... It's super lovely, and there's also like, um, I didn't know that they have like handmade, like, they have like a felting, um, instructions to make like a felted, felted, uh, squirrel, which is pretty cute. Um, so yeah, and then they have the patterns in the back of the book. But let me show you, let me see if I could find the agave. Hmm. Oh, here. Agave. So, as you can see, the stripes are pretty apparent in this one. I do really like that, too. Like, I want to go back and make something with, like, more apparent striping. But I just really like the, like, the texture. I love, I love the look of it. So pretty. So, yeah, that's what I'm making right now. They also have, like, this little scarf. I think it's really cute. But yeah, super happy with it. And um, makes me really happy to see Okinawa celebrated like that. So, um, that is it. Yeah, that is it. I wonder how long this episode was. Sorry if it's a really long episode. Oh, for books. Um... We are currently reading The Glass... Oh, shoot. Not The Glass Castle. I keep thinking it's The Glass Castle. It's The Glass Hotel um, by... Right when I think I'm ready, I'm not. It is... It is, it is, it is... The Glass Hotel by Emily St. John Mandel. That's why I couldn't remember. It's a long name. Um, if you don't know, I run a online book club on Discord. Um, and it's a very chill book club. Like, you don't have to post. But it's a place where you could post about um, what you're currently making. Knitting, crocheting, felting, spinning, whatever. And also, we read a new book once a month. So this book's, um, the book this month is The Glass Hotel by Emily St. John Mandel. I'll put a link below to our Discord chat, and you're more than welcome to join. You don't have to post again. You could just read everybody else's posts if you want to. Um, I honestly haven't started reading it because I've been so busy, but I am planning on starting that soon. Um, I know some people have finished it already, which is kind of so fast it's our but also it's already the 16th so I feel like this month is just flying by um so you're welcome to join I'm currently reading that or going to currently read that um last month we read Hill House by Shirley Jackson um and I honestly haven't been reading that much it's been so busy I've been listening to um podcasts a lot while I've been dying yarn. I've been on like a podcast kick. Um, I listen to Astonishing Legends and I also listen to um, True Crime All the Time a lot. Um, those are like my two go-tos when I dye yarn. Um, so if you have any podcast recs, I'd be just let me know in the comments. Um, I really like like spooky horror stuff so that kind of vibe of podcast would be great. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys are all doing well. I hope whatever you're knitting, making is going well. Please let me know if you're 
let me know if you're trying something new this month. Let me know if you're trying out a new technique, if you um, tried out a new yarn, if you've tried out a new craft. Um, that'd be fun to know. Um, I've also been kind of spinning, but not that much. I, uh, the bobbin is still stuck on the spinning wheel, and I'll show you next time. Um, I feel like this video, all my videos always go on for far too long, so thank you so much for sticking around. Again, my next shop update will be on August 8th, so sign up for the newsletter or follow me on Instagram if you want to keep updated. Instagram is probably the best place. That's where I like to post the most often. So, yeah. I'll see you around. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Um, I hope I hope you weren't bored. If you stuck around this long, thank you so much. Um, yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye.